the history squad are you feeling poor out today sure did it take an arrow to the knee hi hi what we're gonna do today is we're gonna recreate an operation from the medieval times 1403 when the young Prince of Wales had been shot through the side of the head by an arrow. Ouchie. But before we go into the operation, I suppose we've got to go back in history. The best people to have a look at are the Romans. Their military machine with their hospitals, the care for their soldiers, fantastic. The hygiene as well in the Roman army was the best. And one of their surgeons we know as Galen. Good morning, Mr. And Astor. He really worked hard to try and improve what he did with surgery. But unfortunately for him, he couldn't dissect an actual head. He had to rely upon skeletons. No. There you can learn all about bones and teeth, but it's not going to tell you what's inside the skull. And when he moved to Rome, he wasn't even allowed to Drake leak? No, what is it? Dissect skeletons. So he used to wait for floods, and when bodies were washed out of their graves, he could have a look Damn. inside. Can you imagine the smell? But he had a trick up his sleeve. He became the doctor for the gladiators. Now you imagine fighting in the arena, the Colosseum. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the gladiator in front of you slashes across your stomach. Well, your guts are hanging out. You're lying down. Galen comes and has a look. Now he believed that you'd got to observe the patient. So there you're lying with your guts all hanging out. And the doctor is going to observe you. He's going to diagnose what's wrong hmm his guts are hanging out he's been slashed across the stomach genius prognosis he's gonna die but I'm gonna have a look inside at his guts before he passes away and he wrote everything down as things began to go wrong with the Romans they divided their empire into the West and the East our part the Western part well libraries were burnt information was lost but much of Galen's work survived in the Eastern Empire. It ended up being translated into Arabic. So the Islamic world had this information and cool. used it. He didn't come back to the West until later with the Crusades and the onset of trade. Learn good well, thank you, Consummator. He's in recreating this operation. Let's see if we can spot something that's been brought through from Galen. I've got a feeling we'll find it. Now the victim or the patient was on his yes, test on this in the end, okay? In years of age. Let's get in their head. Oh, I must warn you, there might be a bit of blood. He was at the Battle of Shrewsbury, charging down on his horse, when an arrow hit him in the side of the head. Now, it wasn't an arrow with a barb or spikes on it, because you'd never get that out the head. You'd have to push it all the way through, so the chap would probably die. It's what you call a bodkin. I've got one here. And what we think happened was the arrow ricocheted, bounced and broke, went underneath his helmet. I can't. Bounced off Dude, the He's helmet, trolling the cameraman. And went through the top of his cheekbone. Why would, they de why would you design an arrow like this? I guess it's designed to go deeper, maybe armor penetrating, because otherwise you'd want that design that's more harder to pull out, right? Better piercing. Yeah. But even still, I feel like this is bad design. Just a tiny little, like little thing on the edge here wouldn't disrupt the piercing that much just behind the eye you designed it that went through okay ew yeah like this here's the arrow here's the tip done that's still slim sleek that's gonna pierce that's gonna pierce everything. Behold, the perfect arrow had no shot. Whatever, dude. What do you know? Helmet and went through the top of his cheekbone, just behind the eye. As he went through, ah. he shattered the bone. But you know, he stayed on the battlefield for an hour. At the end of the battle, the royal surgeons had a look. I'm going to put the head down. Put on me hat. It saves arrow, iron if the smaller tip arrow. Mm. 
I've got my spectacles. You'll notice my hands are very clean and I'm wearing special clean garments. Wow. So there we are, ready. Now Ten. I'm going to hang these down, use them when I need them. Let's have a look. Hmm. Hmm. He's been shot with an arrow. Yeah. Prognosis? Death. There could be infection. He could be blinded. He could die. Let's treat it. So the surgeon's trying to pull the arrowhead out. Now I do know one of the problems was many of the arrowheads weren't glued on as they twisted. Now let's listen to this. Oh, it's sloshing and grinding uh. in there. Ugh. Oh dear. Blop. We've left the arrowhead in. Hmm. Oops. Yes, it's definitely in there. And we can't get it out. Some doctors used to leave them to go rotten. So when the bone was full of pus and gunge, it was soft enough to prise the arrowhead out. But of course then, you've got infection. And this is where the whole story changes. Because they took the prince to Kenilworth Castle, 50 miles away. And there, There's another royal surgeon, here. John Bradmore, observes the wound. Yes, it's gone straight through the cheekbone. Mm. We could remove the arrowhead and with a bit of luck keep it clean. The prince could survive. I need to have a closer look. He probes the wound. Ah. He measures how deep it is. Now John Bradmore decided the best thing he could do was actually now treat the wound. He is not going to dig that arrowhead out. What? He's going to think about it. He then washes the wound out. Fills it full of an ointment. Couldn't they tip all of these arrowheads in some poison stuff to cause even more damage? Do they not bother with that? Too much work. Coats, 35 months, welcome back. Made with... I mean, I, I know a lot of people did do that. They used poop. Ew! Honey and elderflower. It's his own recipe. He then seals the wound, not with a plaster like you have today. It's almost You like die from the wound anyways? Pastries. No, but that depends on where you're hit, though. Or the poultice. Seals it, and the poor prince was taken to the local abbey where he was given herbal tea to relax him. Mm. And the monks sang for four days. Can you imagine that? This poor, poor chap, yeah. only 16. Now, during those four days, John Bradmore designed a medical instrument to remove... Bro, my mom, growing up, she had some CDs of just monks singing. She'd put that shit on sometimes. It feels kind of weird now, looking back at it. Who, who listens to that? I'd go crazy sometimes. The arrowhead. Now, I've actually got one of those instruments here. It's great. I guess you, like, relax to it. I don't know. She's in a cold. It's called a Bradmore screw. You have a needle, and it has a screw thread at this end. Screw that. You have a sleeve, but this end is the exact shape of the socket of an arrowhead. Aha! Uh -huh. You slide the needle in. I have an apple. As you screw, it expands. You will see that the point oh. protrudes through. Forces open yeah. the point. Yeah. Now this should grip the arrowhead. Yeah, from that is genius. Now the young prince is lying there. They open up the wound. Somebody had to suck out all the gunge. Mm. Would you like that job? You boy, come here, suck out all the royal gunge. No, do it, we cut your head off. Somebody sucks it out, the wound is clean. Then, well, couldn't they have? He places inside the wound yeah. the extractor. He then pushes and tries to move the arrowhead. 
as he pushed the arrowhead shot straight through behind the nose into the other side. Son of a bitch! Immediately, Bradmore opened up the nose, went in for the arrowhead and pushed it back slightly. Holding that, he could then get a grip on the arrowhead. Let's see if I can do it. Right, I'm going to put the head on the bench <sighs> so I can get a tight grip. Now, how was the now, prince doing in all of this? Man. Do you he think that... Alive. Did they give him anything? Brace yourself, your majesty. In we go. I need to get a good grip on the arrowhead the for tea? the prince. I'm pushing really hard. Bro, these sounds. The pain must have been incredible. There, I think. I Imagine, got... like, the sound that it would make in your head as they're doing this, right? The bone vibrates. You hear that, like, in your head. A grip. Let's see if we can extract the arrowhead. No, the suction Elf. of the blood, it's keeping it inside. We need to go in again, wash out the wound, see how we can get deep in. I'm really having to push so hard. All right, I think we've got a grip. Let's see if we can actually extract the arrowhead. Ugh. There it is. He's brought the complete thing out. What he does now? is he washes the wound, stitches up the wound through the nose, and then he winds a very thin, narrow bandage, about a meter long, soaked in honey, into the wound. Mm, honey. And sealed it. We, we got this advice for our cats as well. Sugar and honey on the wound helps stop infection. Sugar keeps uh, infections away. He's now treating the wound itself. He's had a look inside. Only honey? He's a no, it's the, well, it's the sugar in the honey or whatever. No, the, uh, you were supposed to use sugar. Sugar also like absorbs some of the pus or whatever. Thanks for sharing, but we didn't need to hear that. Yeah, fair point. He's observing it, isn't he? He's using that system from Galen, <sighs> the observation. Diagnosed, it's an open wound could become infected, goes right the way to the back of the eye, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, treatment. Mm -hmm. He's put his special ointment, this honey-based so ointment, John. all the way in, soaked in a bandage. Seals it, leaves it for two days. Takes the whole lot out, observes it again, and finds that the wound has healed about a centimeter. Washes it and repeats the treatment. Every two days for six weeks. And he actually healed the wound. The problem was, he didn't have the knowledge to rebuild Like everybody's the attention. Mm. We do Christmas know that this is prince canceled. became Henry V, a famous king of Agincourt days. As an adult, he never had his portrait painted from the front, always from the side. Interesting. We presume that was to hide the terrible scar that he had huh. from the Battle of Shrewsbury. Nah, what's that on top of his head? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Reminds me of Miss Kip's latest haircut. Mm. Hey, look, it's uh, the guy. What's his face? Timothy? There he is. Man, battle scars are cool, though. I would want people to draw me with my battle scar. You can intimidate your opponents with it. When I was a kid, I thought the coolest scar you could have is the scar scar, right? The slash over your eye. I was like actually considering just slicing my own face just so I could have that scar. That's how cool I thought it was. Thank God I uh, <laughs> came to my senses. John Bradmore. But it is a cool scar. Surgeon. He earned himself a Get pension. Getting to a fencing club? Don't you wear masks? As a royal surgeon. It's cool you should do it. You first. We still use this kind of thing in surgery today. Huh. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I don't Thank think a lot of people get arrowheads these days. Thank you very much. Okay, that was sort of neat. Also pretty disgusting. 